Hi everyone, it's the Math Sorcerer here with Chegg. In this video, we're going to be discussing complex numbers. Go ahead and work through an example. Directions say, perform the operations. In part A, we have two plus i minus parentheses three i minus seven. Let's go ahead and work through this one. Solution. You can drop the parentheses around the two plus i. There really is a one here. But whenever you multiply it by 1, you're just going to get the same thing. So we can drop those. And we have 2 plus i. There's also an implied 1 here in front of the 3i minus 7. Because it's a minus 1, we do have to change the sign. Let's go ahead and distribute. Minus 1 times 3i is minus 3i. And then minus 1 times minus 7 is plus 7. Now we can combine the numbers and the i's. 2 plus 7 is the same thing as 9. And then i minus 3i is minus 2i. And that would be the answer to part A. Part B, we have the square root of negative 4. Let's go ahead and simplify this solution. So in general, when you have a negative like this inside the square root, it becomes an i, so this becomes i times the square root of 4. And then the square root of 4 is 2, so it becomes i times 2, which is the same thing as 2i. This is a really long way to do the problem, and it's not how I do it. I wanted to show you because that's showing all of the steps. Basically, when you see something like this, you think, okay, it's got a negative inside the square root, so you know it's going to have an i, and the square root of 4 is 2, so it's just going to be 2i. Boom. Much easier way to do it. So just to make the point, let's do part c, which is the square root of negative 100. Solution. So the square root of 100 is 10, and because you have that negative in the square root, you're just going to get 10i. Much, much faster to do the problems this way. All right, let's keep doing examples. Part d, we have the square root of negative 100 times the square root of negative 81. This one's a little bit tricky. Solution. So it's really important that whenever you're dealing with complex numbers and you see a negative sign inside the root, automatically go to i's. You want to like immediately write as an i. You don't want to multiply these square roots. You're actually not allowed to do that. If both numbers under the square roots are negative, you're not allowed to multiply. So the first step in this problem is to basically simplify the square root of negative 100. That's going to be 10i. That's being multiplied by the square root of negative 81. Well, the square root of 81 is 9, and we have a negative, so it'll be 9i. This is equal to 10 times 9 is 90, and then i times i is i squared. This is equal to 90, and then i squared is negative 1, so this is equal to negative 90. Recall that i squared is equal to negative 1, right? That's super important. So if you have i squared, that's equal to negative 1. And i itself is the square root of negative 1. Super, super useful. Okay, let's do some harder examples. Part e, we have to multiply 2 minus i times 3 plus 2i. Let's go ahead and work through this one solution. So basically, we just distribute or use FOIL, whichever you prefer. Basically, I use FOIL, but I don't think of it as FOIL. I just take the 2 and multiply it by these two numbers, and then take the negative i and multiply it by those two numbers. So 2 times 3 is 6. And then that's the first multiplication. That's first for FOIL. And then 2 times 2i is 4i. That's the O for FOIL. So I do use FOIL. I just don't think of it as FOIL. So you take this one, multiply it by the 3, multiply it by the 2i. Then you go to the inner, which is part of FOIL. Uh, so negative i times 3 is negative 3i. And the last, negative i times 2i is negative 2i squared. So this one and this one and this one and this one. And that's a squared there. Okay, so this is equal to, let's see, we have 6. 4i minus 3i is i. Then minus 2, and then i squared is negative 1. So this is 6 plus i, and then negative and negative is positive, so we get a plus 2. This ends up being 8 plus i. Good stuff. But not too bad. You just have to be very careful as you go through the process. 
And just remember that I squared is equal to negative one. Let's go ahead and finish up with an actual division problem. Part F, we have two over three plus I. Let's go ahead and work through it. Solution. The first step in this problem is to look at the denominator, which is three plus I, and multiply this by the conjugate like this. So it's two over three plus I. Then you want to multiply by the conjugate. To find the conjugate, you just flip the sign. So it's three minus I over three minus I. So very powerful technique, okay? So whenever you're dividing like this and you want to simplify it, look at the bottom piece and then multiply by the conjugate. The conjugate of three plus I is three minus I. You just flip the sign. In the numerator, you can multiply straight across. So two times three is six. Two times negative I is negative two I. In the denominator, there's a very powerful formula. I'll refresh your memory by writing it up here. If you have A plus BI times A minus BI, that's equal to A squared plus B squared. This is a very, very powerful formula that you can use when working with complex numbers. Super useful. In our particular case, we have three plus one I times three minus one I, right? There's really a one in front of the I. And so that's equal to three squared plus one squared. So this down here will be three squared plus one squared. So there's really a one here. So you just square the A, square the B. So three squared plus one squared. So this is equal to six minus two I over nine plus one, which is 10. And then we can actually break this up, right, quite nicely. Uh, so now what we can do is this will be six over 10 minus two I over 10. That's equal to three over five because the two goes into the six three times and into the 10 five times minus, well, two goes into two once and into 10 uh, five times. So it's I over five. But most people don't write the answer like that. They write it like this, three-fifths minus one-fifth, and then you leave the I hanging out at the end like that. That's typically what's done with complex numbers. So whenever you have um, a fraction like this, that's what you do, right? You basically multiply by the conjugate. You're really multiplying by one. That's why you have to put it up top and on the bottom. So just another quick example, like if you had, say, just to make sure you got it, let's say you had... I won't go through it, I'll, I'll pick big numbers. 17 over four minus eight I. In this case, the conjugate would be four plus eight I, and then four plus eight I. And you would do the same procedure, right? On the bottom in this case, it would be four squared plus eight squared. And on the top, you would just distribute and go from there. So very powerful technique. We covered a lot in this video, so hopefully you learned some mathematics. And if you feel like you did, make sure to check out more videos on Chegg. Until next time, good luck.